Good afternoon, Business 100. I hope everyone's doing well. Today, we're going to jump into Chapter 8, which is uh, an introduction into accounting. So let's get right to it. All right. So our learning outcomes, we want to take a look at accounting and describe how accounting information is used by a variety of stakeholders. We identify the purposes, goals, of generally accepted accounting principles, also known as GAAP. We want to take a look at the key elements of the major financial statements. We're going to describe several methods that stakeholders can use to obtain useful insights from a company's financial statements. We'll explain how the budget process can help managers plan, motivate, and evaluate their organization's performance. And we'll take a look at the role of managerial accounting and describe the various cost concepts identified by managerial accountants. So accounting aims at providing users with relevant and timely information. This helps them make good economic decisions. Accounting is uh, a way for us as business owners in particular to get a snapshot of where a company is at a given time and the cash flows, the money going in, uh, coming into the company and the money going out. These are two of the most important things you should know as a business owner. It, it, it allows you to make the decisions you need in the best interest of your company. So for example, marketing managers use accounting to gain that information on sales in different territories. It allows stockholders to use accounting to learn about the financial performances of their companies. Employees use accounting to discuss pay and bonus issues. Creditors will use accounting to access borrowers' credit worthiness. Suppliers use um, accounting to confirm whether or not a company can pay them back. Government agencies like the IRS and the Securities and Exchange Com uh, Commission or the SEC will use accounting for reporting purposes. So public accountants prepare tax reports, undertake external audits, and give advice to companies. Management accountants work within the company. They assist managers, and they analyze reports and financial statements. Government accountants perform different accounting functions for the local, state, and federal government agencies. Accountants need expertise in complex subjects. That's why many of them take up the certified courses, uh, CPA courses, certified public accounting courses. Financial accounting involves preparing financial statements that help stakeholders understand their firm's performance over the years and compare the firm's performance with all of its competitors. The GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, aims at reducing confusion and providing all stakeholders with consistent and accurate financial statements. Statements will, the contents of the statements will be different, right? The performance of a comp will be different, but the general format is the same across the board. In the United States, the ultimate legal authority to set and enforce accounting standards lies with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. But the SEC has delegated this task to the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB. The FASB follows GAAP. It also ensures that the criteria listed below are met in financial statements. Financial statements should contain information that will help users understand the firm's financial performance and condition. A financial statement should supply objective, accurate, and verifiable information. A financial statement should be based on the same core assumptions and procedures over time. And a financial statement should be presented in a standardized way that allows users to compare the financial performance of a firm over time. Financial accounts prepare three basic financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows. Now, large corporations that publicly trade their stocks must publish an annual report with all three of these statements. They must also fire, file their quarterly and annual reports with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Balance sheets characterize assets into current assets, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. 
Liabilities are categorized into current liabilities and long-term liabilities. The types of accounts listed in the owner's equity section of the balance sheet depend on the form of business ownership. Accounting, uh, according to the accounting equation, the value of a firm's assets must equal the sum of the amount of financing provided by the owners and the financing provided by the creditors. Under accrual-based accounting, expenses are matched to the revenue they generate. First step is to deduct the cost of goods sold. The difference between the firm's uh, between the firm's revenue and its cost of goods sold gives the firm's gross profit. In the next step, the operating expenses are deducted. The difference between the gross profit and the operating expenses gives the net operating income. In the final step, the interest expenses and the taxes are deducted from the net operating income. The figure obtained is the net income of a corporation or a company. The firm earns profit when the net income is positive. The firm is said to suffer from a loss when the net income follows negative. In addition to the three major financial statements discussed earlier, firms usually prepare either a statement of retained earnings or a stockholder's equity statement. Financial statements explain the accounting methods a firm used to recognize its revenues, value its inventories, and depreciate its fixed assets. Horizontal analysis refers to the practice of using comparative statements to identify changes in a key account values over time. U.S. securities laws require publicly traded corporations in the United States to have an independent certified public accounting firm, an accounting firm that specializes in providing public accounting services to perform an annual external audit of the financial statements. Annual reports, including notes, often many, many pages of notes, uh, that disclose additional information about the firm's operations, accounting practices, and special circumstances that clarify and supplement the members reporting on the, uh, the numbers reported on the financial statements. The budgetary process facilitates planning by requiring managers to translate goals into measurable quantities and identify the specific resources needed to achieve those goals. Right, so we've talked about in the past, um, SMART goals, right? SMART is an acronym, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-driven, right? SMART goals. Has to be a specific amount, right? We can't just say we want to make more money as a business than we did last year. How much more? Be specific, right? Measurable. Well, for measuring, we want to be 15% better than we were last year. We made 100,000 last year. We need to measure how how we're gonna, how well we're doing to get to 115,000 this year, right? That 15% increase. Actionable. What are the steps we're gonna take? We're gonna open up more sales channels. We're gonna hire more sales representatives. We're gonna also cut expenses in a couple of key categories. What are the action items that we're gonna to take to achieve those goals? Realistic is in fact high in the sky to achieve another $15,000 profit, or is it something that's well within our grasp? We know we have steps to take, and there there are realistic steps. And then time driven, we want to do it within the next year, right? We've got 12 months generate an additional $15,000 than we did last year, okay? Smart goals. So some of the advantages of budgeting, it does help managers specify how they intend to achieve goals set during the planning process. Managers have a chance to take a look at specific numbers. How can they achieve at a higher level of sales? How can they cut expenses? Where? What are the steps that they can uh, take in order to do those things. It will encourage communication and coordination among all the different managers at different levels and key employees, right? And it'll serve as a motivational tool. You have a company meeting. This is our goal for the year. Rah, 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 let's do it. Let's attack it. Boom, everyone's off and running with a great attitude. And then it'll actually help managers evaluate progress and performance. 
they'll be able to identify how far along they are to go at every three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, right? And who their key performers are, whether or not they're actually doing the things they're supposed to be doing. So top-down budgeting takes a look at how top management will prepare the budget with little or no input from middle and supervisory managers. This happens often, particularly in bigger corporations, right? They don't get the buy-in from middle management and the employees. Uh, on the one hand, it can be very efficient to do it that way. Uh, they set the goal and they give the goal to middle management and the employees, and then everyone has to figure out how to do it. On the other hand, not getting that feedback from middle management from key performer, performers at the employee level. Maybe there's difficulties, obstacles that top management might not be aware of. This makes it very hard for the company as a whole to go after specific goals. Bottom up or participatory budgeting is exactly how it sounds, right? Those key performers, those employees, those middle managers are actively participating in the budgetary process. So the first step in preparing an operating budget is to develop the sales budget. Next, the production, the production budget is developed. The production budget is used to prepare budgets for direct labor costs, direct material costs, uh, and manufacturing overhead. The last step in the preparation of the operating budget is the creation of the budgeted income statement. The cash budget identifies short-term fluctuation in cash flows. The capital expenditure budget identifies the firm's plan, investments in fixed assets. The budgeted balance sheet is prepared after combining the information from both these budgets and the budgeted income statement. The master budget will show how all the pieces fit together to form a complete picture for the organization. This slide in particular shows the budget documents that are used to prepare a master budget. The preparation of the budget starts with the sales budget. How much money can we generate through sales? And then we'll end with the budgeted balance sheet. A static budget is based on a single assumed level of sales. Static budgets are excellent tools for planning, but they have weaknesses when they're used to measure progress evaluate performance, and identify problem areas that are needed for correcting. Managerial or management accounting is designed to meet the needs of a firm's managers. So this slide and the next slide shows the ways in which the managerial accounting differs from financial accounting but it's based on the purposes, the types of information presented, nature of the reports, timing of the reports, and adherence to accounting standards in the time period of focus. Cost is the value of what is given up in exchange for something else. Some of the examples of opportunity costs are the wages a company pays to its workers and the payments it makes to suppliers for raw materials. Some of the examples of fixed costs include interest on a bank loan and property insurance premiums. Some of the examples of a variable cost are payments made for the many types of labor, supplies, and utilities. One of the examples of the direct cost is the wage payment made to workers directly involved in producing a good or service. Some of the examples of indirect costs are the costs a firm incurs for plant maintenance, quality control, or depreciation on office equipment. It is easier to measure and assign direct costs and indirect costs. One of the methods managerial accountants have developed to allocate costs is activity-based costing. Okay, so this was a real sort of fast and furious 10,000 foot view of accounting. Uh, for the purposes of smaller businesses, particularly those who are individually owned, you're not gonna see much in the way of assets and liabilities, at least not at first, right? The biggest thing a small business owner has to worry about is sales. Sales, 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 sales. And it's also one of the hardest things. If you are a website developer and you are going into business for yourself, your expertise is in developing websites. It's not actually going out 
and selling your expertise. So the idea of business owners having to wear multiple hats it becomes very real at that point, not only from a, a standpoint of putting together that sales budget, but also taking a step back and look at the accounting, money coming in, money going out. How does it all break down, right? So the accounting is a system for recognizing, organizing, analyzing, and reporting information that affects your organization, right? Big or small. Key financial statements include a balance sheet. Balance sheet is a snapshot of where that company is in that particular moment in time. Income statement, that's money coming in, money going out, right? And the statement of cash flows. It's a further breakdown of that cash flow of money coming in and out, right? Budgeting helps us understand how firms acquire and use resources. We got a lot of money coming in the door. We can upgrade on equipment, right? Get that new laptop, get some software that we need to further develop our websites, uh, subscription-based software, right? Uh, not a lot of money coming in the door. We're going to have to hold off on that new laptop, right? We got we to gotta wait. We got to make sure we get more cash coming in the door to meet all of our expenses. Managerial accounting provides reports and analysis to help make those informed business decisions. All right. Chapter eight in a nutshell, 10,000 foot of view of accounting. Um, get to those assignments, get to those quizzes and discussion boards and, uh, We'll, we'll get we'll get you back here and take a look at chapter nine shortly.